Chicago Bulls GM Mark Eversley is apparently against tanking, even if it does mean getting Cooper flag. Me and Pat are going to discuss that, plus more details to come out of the Chicago Bulls. Behind the scenes thoughts on their offseason. We're going to get into all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked on Bulls, your daily Chicago Bulls podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. I'm Hayes, host, creator of Chicago Bulls Central and Chicago Bears Central YouTube pages and podcasts. And it is a Chicago Bears game week, by the way. Uh, oh so make sure you guys say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Chicago Bears football, no starters, but nonetheless, it is still Bears football when it all comes down to it, man. Today's I just episode. Can't wait to get to the fourth quarter and just go, who? <laughs> that's a fact today's episode is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nba for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms and conditions do apply pat we got word from mark eversley mark eversley doesn't do a whole hell of a lot of talking um but when he does talk uh people seem to pay attention maybe a little bit too deep now i'm going to read the direct quote here we'll break it down give our thoughts on he said this there's no appetite in our building to go young and just blow it all up. We've gone young. We've got players who are experienced and give us a greater opportunity to have a longer runway for sustainability to winning meaningful games for a longer time. I don't want to a year from now be winning 15 games and focusing on the lottery. We have an opportunity here to roll out younger players who give us an opportunity to turn this thing around, maybe not quicker, but in a more pragmatic approach than just looking at the future and building through the draft. Pat, some people have taken this to say that Mark Eversley doesn't value uh, building through the draft. I personally think that they're reading into things that I think are pretty straightforward, but it may have triggered some already existing concerns about the Chicago Bulls. Pat, when you hear this, Bulls don't don't want to go tank. They don't want to tank, but they have gone younger. They do want to develop. How do you feel about it? Uh, first off, when I heard the quote, I was just glad he wasn't talking about Josh Giddy. Uh, but I just think that, you know, th- listen, we we know what this <laughs> what what happened. <laughs> He won't score 18 points, bro. He just won't do it. It's <sighs> killing me at this point, bro. It's like 18. It's right there. Just one more lay, a free throw, anything. Uh, but no. Uh, the, honestly, to me, the, the comments from Mark Eversley are par for what we've expected from this front office. They're not a front office that wants to go out there and lose games. They're never going to put that mission out to their players. They were. They will go through majority of whatever the future of this front office is literally saying, go out there, try and win as many games as possible. And we hope that we can find a team that we can put around you. It's going to be the best case scenario team. That's who this front office is. I said this when we hired these guys, I, we, we we've talked about this. How many times on the show the, the, uh, the, the organization they come from the Denver nuggets, or I should say the organization that AK comes from the Denver nuggets don't tank. Now, hearing this from Mark Eversley may be a little surprising because, like, the king of tanks is the Philadelphia 76ers. But, you know, like... Did it, he come the, in there, though, after the, the tanking era? Was he there during the tank, the heavy tanking era? I have to look that up. I mean, there was a lot of tanking going on, bro. Like, if you were there basically for 10 years, you were part of tanking, bro. Like, unless he came in after they got Joel Embiid, he was there for tanking. Actually, no. Unless he got there after they got Ben Simmons, he was there for tanking. Because remember, Embiid was hurt, and they tanked again. (laughs) So he joined the Philadelphia 76ers in 2016. Oh, yeah, he was a part of some tanking. Yeah, he was a part of some Yeah, he was a part of some serious tanking on that team. Um... But I, I just think that this is this is what I expect this Bulls front office to put out. And at the end of the day, um, whether it's good or bad in the long run, I don't hate the philosophy, although I would rather see the Bulls, if you're going to tank, maybe choose a year that Cooper flag is available. But again, I keep saying this. You really haven't seen teams win championships by tanking. A lot of times it has been by competing or by utilizing other teams uh, uh, draft capital to do so. Maybe, I guess maybe now you could say the Boston Celtics kind of maybe accomplished it by taking. 
but, not really. But they also use Brooklyn's bad pick, right? Aren't the Brooklyn I was about picks? To say, yeah, most of those, yeah, most of those picks were Brooklyn's bad picks. So you really and, still don't have a team by that's the way, won by tanking. Eversley came in actually after they drafted Ben Simmons. He was part of that, so he wasn't really part of a lot of tanking. They were actually competing. Was ben Simmons, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. He came in the league in 2015. 20, 2016 was the year that he was drafted in the two, 2016 draft. Wow. That's nuts. He's been in the league eight years and done absolutely nothing. Absolutely um, nothing. But no, I'm 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 the Bulls being anti-tank. I'm I'm anti-tank. I would like to have Cooper flag on my team, but I think that there are ways, especially with how the NBA is set up right now that you can do that without just saying we give up. And I think Atlanta is a product of that. Now, I think Atlanta might have won it in the wrong year because not a fan of the guy that they selected. But I do think that the NBA is more so rewarding teams who are kind of on the fringe than the teams that are just dog water because they've seen, what, three, three, four of the last six years worth of draft picks basically go to Detroit and die. Like, they don't want to see that. They want their stars to become stars. Yeah, they do. I mean, listen, if you guys have been watching Locked On Bulls for since we took over, we've literally been telling you a tank is not coming for this team. This is the closest thing that they're going to do to tanking. This is the closest thing as far as move off of some of their older pieces, go younger, hope that guys that have some upside either hit that upside this season or – if they don't, cool. Then you got your you, you got you got your pick. That that's yeah. what that's the closest thing you're getting to that. That's it. So, you know, yeah, could they even move Vooch or or Zach to kind of help solidify that? Yeah, probably. But the, the thought process wouldn't have stayed, would, wouldn't have changed. This team is still going to be trying to win basketball games this year. They're not going to be just trying to be bad and lose. And for so, if, a little bit, I respect that. I like what they've done as far as adding young guys with tremendous upsides. Josh Giddy. I hate to tell people this. I get it. The jokes, all that. Josh Giddy couldn't be a perennial All Star. He has that type of potential to his game. He has to round out. His game, some would be more consistent, but he does have that type of upside. Kobe it White, we saw watching that jump shot, bro. I mean, it looked better. Did you see t- the, today's game against I didn't Australia? I see today's game versus Australia. I was at camp today, so I haven't watched today's game ver- or not versus Australia. Versus, I mean, versus uh, Canada. Versus Canada, yeah. I yeah. haven't seen today's game versus Canada yet. But watching that jump shot in the preliminary, it was tough. I understand why fans be concerned. Is, the thing <laughs> is, is that is with and it, don't get me wrong, the jump shot is ugly. But when you look at just about everything, his ability to just read and the point guardsmanship that Josh Giddy brings yep. is is dang and near elite. Like just watching how he manipulates defenses to cause open lanes. Now, hopefully, the Bulls start moving without the ball because I think now we have the type of point guard to where if you do move without the ball, Josh Giddy is going to catch it, catch you. So. Let's let's hope that. that. See now, if, was, if there was an S on the end of the uh, end of ball, then that would have been the that would have been the the wild part. It was just pretty straightforward. The concern is that he's gonna catch you, not that he's gonna find you. I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> gonna, I, mean, <laughs> I meant that he was gonna catch you slipping, but I mean, I can see where you're coming from with that one. But hey, <laughs> they two score eighteen, dog. They two easy. He scored nineteen today. <laughs> Scored 19. Give the boy some credit, man. It's still too close. It's still too close. That is that is crazy, bro. Like this, this, this gonna be what you're doing all season. Uh maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> not if he not if he averages 19. I won't. That's funny. I mean, and then you gotta look at it. The Detroit Pistons won 14 games this year, and they ended up with the fifth over. Like they were completely out of the the, the lottery at that point. Yeah. Not the lottery, but the uh the top four. Uh, top four, the, the top biggest names that you could have gotten out of this. Yeah, draft. so, yeah. like, I mean, that, it, like, I get it, and I understand Tanky. Like, it'd be different if it was, like, the NFL, where if you have the worst record, you get the number one overall pick. But that's not the type of league that we're in. And since they flattening, flattening the lottery odds, like, really, you just – the Bulls haven't been lucky, y'all. I'm not betting on luck anymore. With this. And I think I think here's the thing, though, right? Like, that is what and, – and I have – I commend Adam Silver for this because that's what you want your league to be. You see what happens when you send bad players to bad teams. Or I'm sorry, when you send young players to bad teams. 
Kay Cunningham looks like a phenomenal player. Is he ever going to reach the potential that we thought he was going to be? Probably not because he spent most of his career in Detroit basically riding away to this point. Now, it hasn't been a long career, but having that on your resume makes things tougher for you moving forward because that's where your NBA career started. You kind of have to relearn when you go to the next spot. Having a system that takes the 10th seed. Now, in this year, it's a little bit, right? Like Because because I, I just... A lot of the top guys probably would have been 15 to 20 guys in next year's draft, in my opinion. Mm. And because of that, you're probably dealing with role players. But adding a top pick to a team that has Trey Young is going to do more for your league than adding a top pick to a team that can't win five games uh, or well, how many they lose in a row? <laughs> can't win in, in 20, like 14. 21? Was yeah, it 14? It was, a lot. I can't it was a lot. They did a lot of losing. A lot they of did losing. a lot of losing. You know what I mean? So I think that even with this young Bulls team, right, I would rather see a team that competes and gets, even if it's a 11th overall pick again or whatever it is, or a top eight pick, because adding a top eight player to a competitive team is going to make that team more competitive. That makes the league more entertaining. Like I always go to the Bulls. When, when I, I know that it wasn't their design. They were definitely trying to compete. But when we got Derrick Rose, we had spent the last four or five years drafting well, and we were able to have the role players to support him. And Kurt Heinrich, Lou Aldane, Ben Gordon was still here at that time. right? Then we still went out and got players like Taj. Like, drafting well over time. You don't want to just tank, 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 tank. Because then you end up like the Philadelphia 76ers, who out of all those years of tanking, they had two players that turned out good out of that. That was Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And Ben Simmons was good for three years and fell off. And Joel Embiid been stressed out. They still haven't been doing ECF. There you go. See, <laughs> that's it. They tanked for 10 years <laughs> to make the second round. To make the second round. So, <laughs> you know, and, and we'll continue to talk about this, man. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about uh, Le Levine. Apparently, he's done taking the blame for the Chicago Bulls and the losing that they've done in his tenure. How did me and Pat feel about it? We'll talk about it. But first, we've got to get to a message from one of our sponsors, and that is Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can get a panoramic seat, a view of your seats in the app before you buy, and you get 110% the difference if you find Say the uh, t seats in the same section for less on another app. Okay. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest prices guaranteed. Clap it up. Pat's having too much fun over there, man. <laughs> I do that every time I score a touchdown with NIU on, uh, or not NIU, <laughs> with Northwestern on freaking uh, College Football 25. I That's have annoyed hilarious. many people. That's hilarious, man. Um, but with that said, Pat, uh, Zach Levine has been quoted. It Well, not quoted, but... Apparently, this is how Zach Levine feels about this. And we also have a rebuttal from an anonymous bull source. But uh, according to uh, Jamie Collar from ESPN, Levine has also felt singled out during film sessions. And he feels like he has taken too much blame for the team's losing during his tenure, which has produced one playoff appearance in seven years, despite other roster failings, uh, sources told ESPN. Now, we also have a rebuttal from an anonymous source that says this. I love this because this is how me and you would have a conversation. It says this. He's never won. He's done it his way the whole time and has never won. If he's interested in winning, he'll do what's asked of him. And if he's motivated to not be here, one way is to come be compliant and be who he is. Listen. I know we said that this may not get toxic. This may very well get. Now, the anonymous source, me and you said multiple times, that's kind of always a weird thing. It is. And I do think that there is something to be said that, Zach Levine has taken a lot of the blame. We know he's the best player on the roster, but it kind of comes with the territory. But go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's the point. 
That's the point. Like, is he the highest paid player on the team? In team history, not just on the team. Okay. In team history. Is he, is he, for most of his career outside of the last three years that maybe you can argue it, has he been the best player on the team? Who's supposed to get the blame? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is, is, is Zach Levine special? Is he different from any other player in the NBA that is the best player on that specific team? And like, what, what, like, Jimmy Butler got the blame. Jimmy Butler's gone to multiple NBA finals and he's gotten the blame. Mm -hmm. He scored 50 in those games and gotten the blame. You know what I mean? Like, that, like, that's what the number one player on the team does. And you know what? I, I I hope that this ain't true. I hope that this is this is not something. Because if it is true, you know what? That's why you're not a number one player. Because number one players take the blame. You know what my favorite quote from Car about Carmelo Anthony was? And he's somebody who often had to take the blame and often didn't win. My favorite quote is when Amon Shepard was talking about him. He said, I was wide open in the corner and Carmelo was sitting there pump faking with three dudes on him. And then he turned, did a turnaround jump shot and knocked it down. And he said, I practiced that shot for that moment and I'm going to take that shot. Don't worry about it. And the reason that he said that and Amon explained it basically going, that's his shot because if he make it, that's what they expect of him. And if he miss it, he know they're going to kill him. Now, if you take that shot, he going to take the blame because everybody going to look at him and say, why didn't you take that shot? That's what being the number one player on the team is. No matter what the blame is, the blame is on me. Yes, I'm going to be upset. Yes, there's moments where it's not going to be fair. Yes, there's moments where it's not. And, and you know who showed that? Kobe White showed me that last season. Yeah. Kobe White had games where the Bulls, like, you know, they lost, and yeah, he didn't shoot the ball great, but he did a lot of stuff that impacted why the games were close. And at the end of that game, he said, I didn't play well. That's why we lost tonight. And it wasn't. We could all see that's not why you lost tonight, but that's what your best players do. So I hope that this story ain't true, because if it is, you know what? That's why you'll be a two or a three on every team that you go to. I mean, and that that's but that's the future regardless. Like Zach Levine, any teams is gonna look at him, they're not looking at him as the number one option. And and the thing is, Zach Levine, I, he, I, he may take uh, you know a, a problem with this, but I, I don't care. Like Zach Levine, he's not a number one. He's just not. We've seen it, we've been there, we've done that, we've seen it. He's not a number one, and that's perfectly fine. Me and you talked about it. If Zach Levine's your number two, you're in a good spot. If you can make him your number three, you better be a championship contending team. Yeah. But that's that it. No, it is, man. And and it's it's sad to say it, it's sad that it's gotten here. Again, I keep saying this. I would love a team where Zach Levine is the number two on this team with Kobe White and Josh Giddy. But you you're you're at a point now where you you have to this is why I've said this, dog. Like if this does get toxic, you may have to John Wall, Zach Levine. I just don't I don't see the Bulls do I get where you're where you're coming from with that. I and I say John Wall because John Wall was making a lot of money. <laughs> He was making a lot of money. Yeah, I think um, he was making. Was he making forty? I what? I don't know if John Wall was making forty. Was John, John Wall was making, making a lot of money? And they basically just told him, "Don't come back," which was weird. That was a different situation. But I I don't remember how much he was making. He was making a lot of money. He was making too much money for me to like. I literally was like, "They're not going to tell him not to play on the team." What year was that? Was that two thousand twenty one? Um. Yeah, he was making forty. He was making, he was making 40. forty. He was making forty million dollars. They said, "Go home." <laughs> I just the Bulls are so cheap, man. Uh, like, yeah, Jerry Ryan's by the way, not, not gonna let you tell him go home. <laughs> something that we need to also. Well, I know this is completely separate from this topic. Bulls fans, I need everybody to listen. If you're under the sound of my voice, listen to what I'm saying. For the Bulls fans that keep talking about sell the team, uh, the 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 1901 project with uh, them buying up everything around the UC and revamping the West Side. There's going to be an amphitheater down there. There's going to be hotels and restaurants. Jerry Reinsdorf is never leaving. Hey, dog, never... If, here's the thing. Here's the He's thing. Never First leaving. off, Jerry, the, Jerry is leaving his 2000s legacy because we didn't win any basketball games. So, you know, it's not, it's not – or playoff games, I should say. So it's not a great thing to look at there. Um, or I should say 2020s legacy because we didn't win playoff games in the 2000s. But – that's that's what that is. He's never leaving. And I've said this a million times. Michael's not going to sell the team either. They're Bulls fans. 
Well, at least Michael is. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Jerry's just a smart businessman. But, like, they're, they're Bulls fans. They will sell the White Sox. I, I have hope that at some point, just like the White Sox are selling all these pieces off, they will sell the White Sox. But the Bulls are going to be a part of the Reinsdorf's lives forever. And also, my favorite part about this is when fans go, he should just sell the team if he doesn't want to win. You sell a billion, a multi-billion dollar organization. Shut up. That I hate. I hate the sale to team people. Why? Why would you want a sports team if you're not gonna you want to win? Because I'm making billions of dollars every <laughs> single year. Scrooge McDuckin every night <laughs> is Bro, why you know he wants. I, mean? <laughs> I will dive into what was he diving into? The I will dive into a pool of coins that magically will become a liquid when my body hits it because I'm a billionaire. You know what I mean? It's not playing with it. That's crazy. That's Selling crazy. The team. Get out of Selling here. the team. All right, next up, before we get out, we're going to get to uh, Mark Eversley uh, talking about uh, why the Bulls had to move on from DeMar DeRozan. Wow. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never going to get used to that. That's crazy. You should have seen the lockdown. You should have seen the lockdown NBA idea. When was, I think we were talking about. Oh, is Nick is Nick on podcast PTO? Is that what I read? Is Nick on podcast PTO? Is that what it said? I didn't see it. I mean, that's that, I'm paraphrasing. You I've know, been I've been at, I've been at camp all day. Nick, so I Nick isn't smooth enough. enough to come up with the term podcast PTO. He's just not that smooth. Like, Nick's probably using some AI. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's probably using some AI. You know what I mean? Nick looks like, like an AI. Like if you ever think about uh, AI coming into consciousness, he it looks like that's what Nick. It would be like. Nick. It could yeah. be Nick. I can see that. Yeah, you can see that. He's oh. all, he's got like that borderline, like, oh, this is very helpful. Up oh, there it is. He's gonna murder everyone. Yeah, you know <laughs> exactly. I mean, like kind of like that. Like yeah. you could like all it takes for Nick. If Nick literally takes the gel and just does the hair straight back, like because oh, he does oh, oh. he does the swoop right now. If you yeah. did it straight back, that's oh, murder. Straight Nick. back, straight that's well, murder. Straight, Nick. <laughs> listen, straight back. Nick's visiting Indiana heavily. You know what I'm saying? It's a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Home of the you know who we know we know it straight back is a villain. <laughs> That's a villain. That's a villain. He can't grow facial hair because that's a straight back and the facial hair combination. But we know Nick can't grow, grow the facial hair. But with that said, by the way, for those who don't know, Nick is our basically our boss here at Locked On. Yeah, we um, know he's listening. <laughs> yeah, we know. Uh, Mark Eversley was quoted as saying this about moving on from Demar. Says this: I love Demar. He was terrific for our organization in the last three years, but I don't think we were in a position to deliver what he was looking for going forward. He wants to win. He deserves the opportunity to win at a really high level, and arguably, we're not in that situation right now. As much as it hurt to let him go, I'm extremely happy for him. Keep in mind, Mark Eversley was reportedly a big part of Demar Derozan coming here. Because uh, he did start his career off in Toronto, yeah. of, he was instrumental in bringing Demar here. What do you think about that quote, Pat? I think once Demar turned down that money, they were like, "Well, all right, but <laughs> we're gonna get the heck up out of here." Um, listen, I, I I will say this: I think that it is good that they put Demar Derozan in a in a winning situation uh, out in Sacramento. I think that it is commendable of them to want to do that for him. Um, but I think that the Bulls knew that this was done. And and Mark Eversley even talks about, you know, we we wanted to, in, in this same article, you know, we wanted to give it another shot. But at the end of the day, we kind of realized we had our answers. And yeah. so when once you get your answer, as much as it sucks, sometimes you, you do have to just say, listen, we got to take a step back to try and take a massive step forward. And I think that's what moving on from DeMar DeRozan is. It, it's not that you are you dislike DeMar. It's not that you don't want DeMar around. It's not that you don't want DeMar to be a part of your team. It's that you know what DeMar DeRozan is looking for. You know what, what he's expecting. And you know that you can't provide that right now for him. And so why sit here and have him get to a disgruntled point if you can just say, we'll just move on from you and, and we'll be about our day. And at the end of the day, you were able to get something out of it that you weren't going to be able to get out of it initially. So not a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to come to the realization. And I honestly commend the Bulls for getting to the point of, did, did they get there later than what we would have liked them to? Absolutely. Okay. Had they gotten to this uh, this point earlier, we could have had a couple more assets. But I am glad that they got to this point because you got to first realize and admit where you are, and then you can start adjusting and, and move forward. And that's where the Bulls have gotten to. I'm glad that they finally got there because we could have this offseason could have very well went the way of, oh, we're re-signing re DeMar DeRozan. 
and we're going to fill out the rest of the roster with all veteran minimum players and, and get a go at this uh, again. The Bulls have done something different with it. So I uh, commend them for that. Now we just got to see, and it's going to be in that process again where I know a lot of Bulls fans are hoping. I've, I, I keep seeing it. I keep seeing the hope, and, I, and I'm glad they have that optimism. Maybe I'm just jaded because of the way that the years have gone. But there are a large part of the Bulls fan base that really think the Bulls ha- are somehow going to win more games than last season. Shout out to y'all on that one. Um, but it's probably going to take a few years, and that's perfectly fine because, honestly, when you look back on it, the Bulls really spent a bunch of assets, multiple first-round picks to put a team together that were right in the same spot that we probably would have been in had we just held on to our young guys. But I think here's the thing. It's not impossible, so I, I don't want to yes, kill I'm these, not saying that. those I'm just saying it's dreams, yeah. but what it's going to take for that to happen is Josh Giddy has to play exactly like he's playing right now, and Kobe White has to turn into a Tyrese Halliburton type of player. Yeah, which and, is- and what I mean is the jump, not that specific yeah. type of player, but that jump that he had. Ty- Kobe White has to become Tyrese Maxey. If next season Kobe White becomes Tyrese Maxey, the Chicago Bulls will win 40, 43 games next year. You're still missing a lot of pieces. <laughs> Yeah, you're still missing a lot of four. I'm not saying you went at 49. Yeah, you know I mean, but like 43 yeah. games. Because that means that you have a legitimate star level player on your team that you can count on with a really good point guard and some really nice young pieces as far as role players, right? But you have no star. Right now, you've got a team of role players. A team of role players is the Denver Nuggets that we talked about before Yoka showed up. Yeah. And guess what? That's about 39 to 42, 43 games. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it, like I said, we're going to play a lot more fun brand of basketball. I really do think that. I think we're going to get out in transition. The offense is going to be better. The defense, I mean, we'll see how the defense rounds out, man. Um, but you y- y kind of got to eat, eat your medicine at some point, and that's what the Bulls are doing right now, and we'll see where it ends up leaving us, man. We're going to be the same team we were every year, weren't we? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, and like I've said before, you said it too, winning, winning, and I'm, I'm not saying the Bulls are going to, but even if the Bulls win 35 games this year, but That's you've done so yeah. through your young, it's a it's a lot better than having three players that are supposed to be in the prime of their career that are two are over 30, one's approaching 30, and you got 39 games out of that, right? Like, it's a lot different of a prospect there. No, for sure. 100%. 100%. Hey, man, appreciate y'all for tuning in, showing love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star view. Y'all know what to do. Follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. You can follow us both on everything at Locked on Bulls. And uh, football's back, baby. Football's back. We're in a bull, a bull, a Bears game week, man. I'm super excited. I don't care who's starting or whatnot. Just the fact to see the Bears take the field and play actual football. And we still got a, a few players that are going to now step in because none of the starters are playing. I'm excited to see Austin Booker. I'm excited to see Zach Pick. Listen, we could do this is not a Bears podcast, but there's a lot of reason to be excited. You guys can follow me at CEO Hayes. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns at lockedonbulls at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, with all that said, man, uh, for Pat the designer that's been locked on bulls we about you y'all peace peace Man, is Jalen Duran clapping Angel Reese?